So in the previous video we introduced um, vector spaces and then in particular Hilbert spaces. And in this video I'll talk about how to construct a basis for um, these uh, Hilbert spaces or, or what a basis is. Um, so to understand the basis we first have to introduce um, the, f the, the concept of linear independence of uh, a set of states in a vector space. So if we have a vector, if we have a set of states in a vector space, these states will be um, linearly independent if um, for any linear combination that we write, um, for this linear combination to be zero, uh, the coefficients have, have to be zero. So there's no um, dependence between the different states that would allow um, the sum to be zero without, um, with non-zero coefficients. So now um, a basis of our vector state is the largest set of linearly or a basis, so there's multiple bases, um, is the largest set of uh, linearly independent states um, that you can uh, construct. So it's, um, if, if we come up with, for example, now uh, capital N states, phi sub i, that are linearly independent, then those could be um, a basis if there is no larger um, number of uh, states n that you could find um, while still maintaining this linear independence. Because we have a, uh, a countable number of basis states, in, uh, in this case here we have, remember we're talking about um, finite dimensional vector spaces and finite dimensional quantum systems here, so um, if we have a countable number and finite number of uh, elements in our basis then we can just uh, describe them with uh, with regular numbers one two and three in this three-dimensional basis um, or uh, if another um, notation is better we'll just write x or y as, as, the, as we did for uh, the, the case of the, the photon polarization. Now I've used dimension already a couple of times of course dimension is the number of basis factors n equal three in this case of uh, the basis one two three or n equal two in the case of the the photon polarization states. Now, if for all of the, um, the basis vectors we have a, uh, um, an inner product that is equal to zero, that means that they're orthogonal to each other. Um, if, <coughs> excuse me, if uh, the inner product is not just zero for vectors that are different, basis vectors that are different, but if it's also equal to one um, for individual vectors, that means that they're normalized. Um, then of course we have an orthonormal basis. So again, nothing is new here, but do remember that while this may sound familiar from um, either geometry or calculus, this of course applies to uh, a, a much broader class of, uh, of vector space elements from uh, functions to, to more abstract um, uh, concepts, okay? So now, of course, once we have a, a basis, um, or in particular, if we have an orthonormal basis, so a basis where all of the vector, where all of the states are orthogonal and are normalized, then we can write any state phi in the Hilbert space um, with a unique set of coefficients c sub i. And again, uh, if it, the dimension of our vector space is, is capital N, there will be n of those um, coefficients, one for each vector state. Uh, once for each uh, basis states and we'll, we'll be able to write this as uh, phi is the sum over c, c i with each of our basis vectors i. Um, now what is going to be the value for um, c i? Uh, we can um, obtain the value for c i by doing a, 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 an operation, a linear uh, and um, scalar product construction with a particular basis vector m. So if we um, uh, apply this bra m on, uh, on, on the left side of phi here and then bring it through the sum um, we'll end up with our uh, inner product of m and i which is in this orthonormal basis is uh, um, uh, Kronecker delta of m and i so we end up with cm the coefficient um, for the mth basis vector uh, is equal to the inner product of that basis vector with phi or in some other uh, way of thinking about it this is the the projection of phi on this basis vector m so now that we've uh, um, decomposed or state phi in this orthonormal basis i 
Um, we can uh, also use this to rewrite the scalar product or the inner product of two states, phi and chi in this case, um, in terms of their uh, decomposition components. So in particular, if I take phi as uh, described with the coefficient c, um, if I take chi to be described with the coefficients of d in this basis, then um, the product will be the sum of d i star um, c i, so a complex conjugate of d and c. Um, so again, something that, uh, that um, you're familiar with and uh, that we actually looked at in particular as an example in the case of um, uh, these complex vectors um, as an example of a vector space uh, in the previous video. Um, if we look at the norm for a single state, then we'll find, of course, ci um, conjugate times ci um, summed over i, and so that gives us then uh, the, the, um, the traditional um, expression of the norm, which you're also familiar with. Okay, now that we have uh, introduced basis vectors, let's move on to linear operators. Uh, so a linear operator A um, operating on the vector space or on elements of the vector space um, operates on this state or this uh, element of the vector space phi to give us another element of the vector space A phi. <coughs> Excuse me. And it does that such that um, if we operate on a linear combination of phi and chi to uh, two states or two um, elements of the vector space, then we, uh, we end up with a linear combination where this lambda now um, operates in our vector space. Okay, um, so uh, this really indicates that that alpha that the a that the operator a is a uh, linear operator. Um, for a nonlinear operator, this would not be uh, not be satisfied. Now, um, if uh, if we have uh, a vector state phi that we can de decompose in a basis, and we can uh, decompose our, our, our vector space state um, a phi into the same basis but with different coefficients d, um, then we can also um, use our original um, decomposition with our, our c's, but now written in um, terms of the basis vectors operated on with, um, with the linear operator um, a. And so we can, uh, if we combine these two ways of thinking about um, or uh, operation of a on phi, and so here we've written it in terms um, of the basis vectors here, we have written it in terms of, um, uh, of, of the operator, the linear operator working on the basis functions. If we now um, take the, uh, if we now try to determine d sub i, um, as we did in, the, in, in earlier, um, by uh, taking the inner product with our basis vector m to calculate d sub m, then um, we'll find that we can describe our matrix, um, our uh, linear operator, we can represent it through um, a matrix that has as its coefficients the um, inner product of m with um, a operating on a basis vector n. So this gives us a way of representing an operator in the basis given um, by, uh, in, in this case, uh, you know, a set of, uh, of basis vectors numbered by i or by m or n. So um, I, would, I do want to make clear here that there's a difference between, of course, the operator itself, which is operating on, um, on elements in the vector space, and then the matrix that represents the operator in a particular basis. So we, we should keep these things uh, um, separate, at least um, in our mind, and then uh, uh, make sure that you know when you're working with the matrix representation of the operator and when you're actually working with the operator. So there's two special operators I should point out. So first of all, there's of course the identity operator, which does nothing on a vector state. It just returns the same vector state. And then there's the null operator, which operating on a vector space element um, just returns or, uh, uh, or null element in that vector space. Um, we can multiply operators together, which basically means we apply them successively. So A times B on a state phi gives us the same as A on B on the state phi. Um, and so we write that shorthand as just AB on phi. 
Um, in general, AB will not be equal to BA, so the um, multiplication, the, the operators will not necessarily commute. They won't be abelian. So that's one thing we can do with operators is we can multiply them. Um, the other thing we can do is take the adjoint of an operator. So if we take the adjoint of an operator, what we're doing is instead of having the operator operate on um, elements of the vector space, we're having it operate on elements of the um, of the dual vector space. So instead of working on elements of H, it's working on um, elements of uh, H star as introduced in the last video in the Hilbert space video. So um, in particular, if we have a, a state chi that we take the inner product with um, um, A star, so the adjoint, uh, sorry, A adjoint um, phi. So we take that inner product, we can also write that as um, A operating on our chi in the dual vector space and then an inner product with uh, with the regular um, state phi here. So that's how um, the adjoint linear operator is, uh, is defined. Uh, we can now take this adjoint linear operator, um, the adjoint of, uh, of A, um, and now find a matrix rep representation of that, um, uh, of that adjoint operator. And when we do that, we find that we, uh, we just get the Hermitian conjugate matrix um, compared to the original matrix that described our, uh, our linear operator earlier on. And then finally, if we take the adjoint of the product of two operators, so we have a b um, adjoint on phi, um, if we again take the inner product with chi and we move a b um, to, the, to the bra side, and then we move one by one a and then b over to uh, the cat side, and we see that um, a b uh, adjoint is equal to B um, adjoint times A adjoint. So the order changes, of course, something that you're also familiar with um, from uh, linear algebra. Um, there's two important classes of operators that we will talk about a lot, again, because of their connection with uh, the, the physics, of course. There's Hermi Hermitian operators where the adjoint is equal to the operator itself. And then there's unitary operators where the product of the adjoint of uh, the operator times um, the operator itself is equal to identity. Uh, so in both cases you're familiar with their matrix representations as, uh, as Hermitian matrices and as unitary matrices but again these are these are operator properties um, and so uh, when you're thinking about unitary operators it's not necessarily um, a, uh, a statement about uh, the matrix representation. So these unitary operators are in particular important because they leave the norm unchanged and that's something you can see easily if you just calculate the norm of, uh, of uh, the, the vector state u phi um, then uh, um, by moving u to the other side and uh, you immediately get u um, adjoint times u which is by definition equal to one so we get um, the original norm again. So. Uh, um, unitary operators don't change the norm. Hermitian operators, um, that's where the adjoint is the same as uh, the original operator. So now let's look a little bit closer at these unitary operators. Um, what happens if we apply um, unitary operators to all of our um, basis vectors? So what happens is we form a new set of, um, of, of states. So out of every um, basis state n will form a state n prime. Um, and if we look at uh, our, um, our inner product between two states in this new set of states, so we look at the inner product of uh, m um, prime and n prime, and we go through the, the calculation, we see that we end up with delta mn or delta m prime n prime. Uh, so the um, the relationship that turned um, n uh, that, that uh, described our original set as a orthonormal basis um, uh, make sure that also um, after unitary transformation or after the operation of this unitary operator um, we have a orthonormal basis set. So um, unitary operators turn orthonormal bases into other orthonormal bases. So what does that do to uh, the, the basis expansion of a, of a state phi? Um, so if we started off with 
um, with a state phi and we want to describe um, this the same state phi but in a, um, a, a basis that is um, transformed with these uh, unitary operators. So then we go through the same um, uh, calculation of the coefficients again. So to calculate our C sub n prime, so now compared to um, the, the basis um, state n prime, um, we find that if we again uh, start with u n, move over u to this side, um, and then uh, um, describe this in terms of n u adjoint m, so that's our matrix representation of the adjoint matrix, then we see that um, our, our new coefficient describing um, or our new coefficient corresponding with the nth um, basis state after transformation is given by a product of our um, adjoint unitary matrix representation uh, with the original vector of, uh, of coefficients in um, or expansion uh, in the original basis. So the coefficients transform by multiplying with a matrix rep representation of the adjoint um, of the uh, adjoint operator. So that's what happens when we apply um, a basis expansion in the new basis after unitary transformation. So what happens if we do something similar to the linear operator? So um, how does our linear operator look after um, after uh, description or after moving or um, or after transforming rather or um, old orthonormal basis into a new orthonormal basis. So we apply the same uh, the same approach here. So we uh, we write down what our a prime um, m n uh, is is defined as. So we have our bra m prime with uh, the cat a times n prime a operating on n prime. So if we again work through this, uh, we end up with a matrix that is now a product of uh, the matrix representation of the adjoint. Um, of this unitary operator, and then um, the original, the, the matrix representation of the linear operator in the original basis, and then the matrix representation of the unitary um, operator. Uh, and um, so, so what it basically turns out is that uh, the, the matrix representation changes as um, u adjoint times a times u. So whereas the coefficients transform under, or the coefficients of a, a state in a certain basis transform under u um, adjoint, the matrix um, representation of an operator changes as u adjoint times a times u. And that is something that is, of course, going to come back a lot when we look at um, unitary transformations. Something to also keep in mind um, for, uh, um, uh, for many of the, the, the future courses that you might take in particular field theory. Okay, and I think that's it for today. Thank you.